It looks appetizing, but I'm gonna pretend like it's coffee. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> not good. <laughs> you don't think that's good? I don't know. It's like it's, it's pretty like good. Funky apple juice. Well, she ate durian. How does it compare? <laughs> Much better than durian. I can drink this. I'm not trying to throw up here. <laughs> Good morning, adventurers. Good morning. So if you saw yesterday's road trip, we drove our little tuk-tuk from Colombo down to the city of Gaul, where we are now. Mm -hmm. It took us about five hours. It was a kind of a long first trip, but we made it. We're here. And as you can tell, it is beautiful. Yeah, it's a beautiful sunny day. So a little bit about the history of Sri Lanka. Since the 1500s, it was colonized originally by the Portuguese, mm -hmm. then by the Dutch, and then by the British. And then in the 40s, they became independent. So now they are their own country. But what's interesting is that you're gonna find all these different influences from all those different cultures I just mentioned. One of them is this fort. So it was originally constructed by the Portuguese. Then when the Dutch came in, they kind of tweaked it and mm. made it their own. Since then, it's actually been really well preserved. So you can walk through and get this really interesting European feel in the middle of Sri Lanka. Yeah, this is actually the second largest Dutch fort in the world remaining right now. I guess they built around 22 forts on the whole island. I think this is one of just a handful that are left. The walls of the fort are actually constructed with granite and coral. So there are spots where the inner coral is exposed and we're gonna try to show you some of that a little bit later. The guys at Tuk Tuk Rental actually introduced us to a local guide that they know down here. His name is Shanjay. He mm -hmm. does tours of the old town. He does some food stuff. He does all kinds of tours. We're gonna have his information linked in the description below, but we are about to go meet up with him. He's gonna take us to a local spot for a local Sri Lankan breakfast. All right, we're gonna go hop, hop in a Tuk Tuk, not our Tuk Tuk, but hop in a Tuk Tuk. Tuk Tuk and probably get some hoppers. Hop to hoppers. Let's go. We've made up to our breakfast spot. We've met up with Shanjay. He's gonna be our fearless leader this morning. And then I think you'll see him again tonight. Maybe for some debauchery. Oh yeah, it's gonna be fun. <laughs> That's exactly the plan. We'd all do all the safe stuff in the morning and yeah. the unsafe stuff we do in the night. Great. Awesome. We are right now in a very, very local joint. This is the everyday person's morning meal, so to speak. What we are going to see is a perspective of the different types of food that we consume for breakfast. So I've told them to bring a little bit of everything so that you get a perspective of awesome. something. There is one thing that you have to be into. It's this, it's coconut sambo. Ooh, oh, yeah. okay. So this is coconut country and co the coconut tree is our, is our holy grail, right? Mm -hmm. So this is a simple thing. I, mean, I can do this. It's, it's a simple thing that you can do with grated coconut. Mm -hmm. And we have it for every bre every breakfast. And generally, as far as I know, the white girls who eat this get addicted to this. Okay, I'm excited. <laughs> well, you heard it here. <laughs> <laughs> this is what I eat mostly for breakfast because it's got it's high in fiber because they use a lot of red rice in it. So it's a good breakfast to have. This is a favorite of everyone. We call this bitter roti, but this is technically a paratha that has an egg inside. Ooh, okay. This is more Indian influenced uh, food, which is, this is a dal vade, okay. and this is the lentil vade. Generally, this is what a typical Sri Lankan would eat for breakfast. Okay, yeah, well, we yeah. have so many amazing yeah. dishes this here. This table is completely full, you guys. I don't even know where to begin. Yeah, Shanjay didn't let us down. He got one of everything, I think. <laughs> this is a coconut roti. We didn't have it the other night. We saw them out and about. I'm gonna try this. Just try it plain just to see how it is on its own and then we'll start doing the, the good old mixing. Welcome to a new love life. Mm. <laughs> oh, that is really good. I don't know that I would have known there was coconut necessarily. I get more of the onion flavor. There's yeah. a lot of um, little you chunks of onions onion and chives in there. You it's will a little soon bite into a chunk of coconut. Oh, there's chunks. Okay, there'll be chunks in there. But it's really good. It's a little dry, so I think it would go so well with all the different curries and sauces. Oh, it's so nice though. A really dense, like a really thick pancake or something, or a Welsh cake. Yeah. Right, this is some beautiful thick tuna that was likely caught just this morning, right here. It's nice and curried in the coconut milk. Oh yeah. Oh, that's some fresh tuna. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> mm. Ooh, it's a little spicy, but not too spicy. And the coconut milk is really nice in there. It's really creamy. 
Mm, that is delicious. When I have uh, string hoppers, I always like mixing it with coconut. Mm -hmm. Nice. And you use your five fingers. You use your five fingers to mix it. Yeah? There is no there is no utensil can, that can do this this mixing. Y'all, that entire breakfast spread was six hundred rupees, which is three oh, three bucks. Yeah, so, about three dollars, oh less than three dollars. Yeah. That's amazing. Look at this. Whoa. Oh my what god. Is this? It's a fiber root. And you can make a salad with it. Okay. Yeah, it's, yeah of course. Whoa. Whoa. It's like, strong, it's like a spider it's like web. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh my word. Wow, that's crazy. <laughs> There's a lot of stuff here that we ate this morning. So, jackfruit here. This is a little uh, pumpkin, right? Yeah, this little guy? It's from the melon. It's, we call it shakari. It's a type of pumpkin. This Got is it. the main pumpkin. So when we did our food tour in Colombo, our guide showed us this wood apple, which is basically like an apple that looks really moldy and it's very hard on the outside. This is called a wood apple. It smells like blue cheese. It's very hard. Oh, um, the smell is actually good, I think. You think? Yeah, it's just got this really fruity smell. Fruity? Yeah. I feel like it smells like feet cheese <laughs> mixed with fruit. This is what the juice looks like. <laughs> mm, Can't I'm say it looks appetizing, but... I'm gonna pretend like it's coffee. Work is a good substitute for coffee. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Not good. <laughs> you don't think that's good? I don't know. It's like... It's, it's pretty like good. funky apple juice. I think it, it's great. It tastes like it smells. It tastes like cheese apple juice. No, I think... Well, I don't get the cheese. cheese. I just get like tart, tangy, sweet. It's, yeah, it's, that's a little bit of tangy It's there. really good. The tang, I think. Give it's it another like, taste. It's a little funk, maybe. It's really uh, pretty you don't like thick. funk? Mm. <laughs> <laughs> well, she ate durian. How does it compare? I, I, much better than durian. I can drink this. I'm not trying to throw up here. <laughs> Just walked into the fort area of the town, and Shanjay's gonna take us around so we can learn a little bit more about it. Shanjay is just taking us down this small alleyway. Of course, the fort has become very touristy, and you have the main walking strips, but it's also still very local, so you have a lot of people who just live here. So if you go off the main streets, you can just explore all these little alleyways. There won't be another soul just like this. Yeah, where people are just living. They're not involved really with the tourism, or if they are, they have a villa that they're renting out and they're just living here. Mm -hmm. This spot here, you can see some of the exposed coral that's inside of the walls. So this is what makes up a lot of the fort, these little pieces of coral here. Super cool. We've come back down to where we started the video. We wanted to show you guys this amazing lighthouse. So it's in the corner of the fort, like in the southeast corner. It's pure white and it's just surrounded by these palm trees. So it just makes for epic photos. There's a lot of people who are coming and going, but it's like noon right now. So even being busy like this, we were still able to get times where everyone would leave and we could get photos to ourselves and stuff. It was very cool. So this is actually Sri Lanka's oldest light station. Yeah. It dates back to 1848. And it's a light station because the lighthouse actually burned down in 1934 and then they rebuilt it in 1939. So it's the oldest light station, but the lighthouse itself is not the oldest lighthouse, I guess. Oh, you guys, I, look, I found this authentic Indian restaurant, Indian Hut. I feel like I know this logo though. Does it ring a bell for you? No, no Indian bells. Hut? Hmm. We've parted ways with our fearless guide. He actually had to run to work and he was just doing us a favor coming out in the morning and taking us around the city real quick. Yeah. But I think from here on out, we're gonna have to explore it on our own. Yeah, we might meet up with him tonight though. He was wanting to go out for some drinks and to show us some local night spots. So yeah. fingers crossed that'll work out. But for now, we're just gonna explore and chill. So we've all heard of the Dairy Queen, but Sri Lanka did one better. We've come to the Dairy King, and we have gotten the most amazing milkshakes. I think it's pineapple, mango, passion fruit, and then obviously delicious cream and ice. Oh my gosh, it's so hot, I'm so excited for it. And they have limited seating, so we literally came into, I think, just their living room. <laughs> I think so. And he turned the helicopter on for us. <laughs> Is that what he called it? <laughs> I'll turn the helicopter on, nice. yeah. Give this smoothie a little try. 
Ooh wee. That is delicious. He must have put yogurt in it or something, but I think I think there's milk in it as well, so it is so creamy. There isn't a single little chunk in there other than these little seeds from the passion fruit. Dang, that is so good. It's so tangy. So delicious. Thank you, bye. Well, we sat down and chatted with the Dairy King himself. It was actually really cool. He was just talking to us all about the uh, tsunami. So if you guys don't know, there was a tsunami that hit Sri Lanka in 2004. Mm. And what's really interesting is that the fort stayed mostly protected. They only had about five inches or so of water. And it's because of these epic gutter systems that they have here. I mean, this has all been redone now because they got destroyed, but the water would come in and flow down the gutters and then flow out to the sea. So they never had that much standing water in here. Really lucked out because all down here in the south and especially the east was where a lot of the damage was. Yeah. Also, we just recommend going there in general because the smoothies were amazing. He also does ice cream. I can imagine it's probably delicious as well. Yeah, he said there's 18 different flavors, makes them all by hand, makes them the day or maybe the night before, sells it all by the next day. So mm -hmm. it's super fresh, real milk, he assured us. No <laughs> added anything. So if you are toasty like we were, go check them out. In the middle of the fort area, there's this one street that cuts across it called Peddler's Road, and it's lined with cafes, shops, boutiques, all sorts of stuff. So if you need a hideaway from the sun, this is the street to do it on. You guys, we've met back up with Sean Jay. He's on a mission up there. He's taking us to some street food stall, yeah. I guess. First True up. form. Yeah. We're but then after, after that, he's going to take us to a few bars, local bars, to check out. So I don't know what's going to happen, but it's going to be, be fun. fun. <laughs> this is done with sand. What is it? Sand. Sand. Yeah. Oh. Sand is a conductor of heat, right? Right. Oh, so it keeps so, it nice and warm. Yeah. It gives a good roast. Mm. And yeah. this is some of the best things that you can eat on the streets because it has absolutely no condiments. No oil, no salt, yeah. nothing. So this is how the peanuts start. Yeah, sir, then yeah. he roasts them with the sand in here, yeah. sifts them like he's doing right now, and then serves them up. We walked by this vendor, he was like, you like chickpeas? Let's get some chickpeas. So we're getting chickpeas. <laughs> They're delicious. I do look so good. Joe's Pub. That's where we're heading to. <laughs> Cheers. Alright. <laughs> she tried it before I could film her, but was it good? Sorry, it was really good. It's nice and spicy. Super hot, really creamy in there. Chickpeas sometimes can be a little um bean like, I yeah. think. They like can be kind of gritty. Yeah, gritty. Not these. Perfect. Mm. And what do you pay for these? Man, this is fifty bucks. This is another fifty bucks, man. Got it. So that's like So it's what? like twenty-five cents. One maybe? third a dollar? Yeah. yeah, yeah. You guys these peanuts are actually incredible. There's no salt on them, no sugar, no anything. It's just delicious. They're so hot. So it's delicious, warm, roasted peanut flavor. It's perfect. You like those warm nuts, eh? Love me some warm nuts. <laughs> warm balls, warm nuts. Anything round, basically. Goodbye, Sean Jay. Have a good night. He's going to go off into the night. Always, always. We will meet again one day. Yeah. Goodbye. We'll one day. Maybe, maybe I'll come to yeah. Come to Missouri. We'll cook you dinner. We'll cook you ramen. No, if I come to Missouri, I'm cooking you. Okay, you cook us food in Missouri. <laughs> holy cow. You guys. Literally, holy cow. Holy cow. I've never seen anything like that. Oh, shit. Excuse me. Jesus. Well, y'all, it's the next day. We are back in our trusty tuk tuk and we are heading deep into the island of Sri Lanka <laughs> today. Climbing a lot of hills. We ended up just having some drinks with uh, Sean Jay and uh, had quite a few drinks, so we decided <laughs> to just put the camera away and yeah. just enjoy the rest of the night. Uh -huh. Yeah, it was a lot of fun. Sean Jay was a, a great guide, giving us a lot of like, cool information about Gaul, and it was a lot of fun just exploring the old city. It was so pretty, so different than a lot of the rest of Sri Lanka that we've seen so far. Yeah, but we'll have a link to his information in the description below, but highly recommend uh, booking a tour with him if you come through the Gaul area. But I think that's gonna do it. We're going, we're making our drive up to uh, Udawalaway, and then mm -hmm. next time you guys see us, we're gonna be doing an elephant safari. Oh my Hopefully gosh. Hopefully we're gonna see some elephants. We'll yes, see. fingers crossed. A lot of people have seen them. We're going to a park that is known to have quite a large population of them, so. Oh my god, I'm so excited. Wild elephants. Never in my yeah. life did I think I would see wild elephants. Alright, goodbye adventurers. We'll see you on the road.